to Gamecasters. Today I'm bringing you a new video in a series that I'm going to be doing dedicated specifically to Fallout 4. It's going to be a sort of strategy guide, um, how to plan your characters, and for say, if you want to build specific um, types of characters early on, um, obviously with the game having infinite leveling you can eventually get all the perks, but Obviously, as most games work, the higher level you get, the, the more experience it requires to level up, and some of these perks you're not going to be able to get until a very long time into your playthrough. So, I'll be going through all the perks and the abilities and everything you can get for your character and which ones you should focus on for a specific type as you progress into the game. Um, this video is going to be based on strength, and then there will be six other videos after this one. It's a seven part series for this section of it. Um, it's going to be based on the special perks, um, strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. Now, strength is a measure of your raw physical power in the game, it affects pretty much anything to do with melee or your carrying weight. Um, it's definitely something you want to have a decent amount of points in when you create your character if you plan on using melee or unarmed attacks. Um, even if not, I would still put at least a base of four or five points in the beginning of the game just because of the fact it increases how much you can carry you unless you don't plan on looting a lot which Fallout 4 with the base building um, feature in the game you're gonna be needing to pick up a lot of loot um, you can go about it and buying the resources you need but you I personally would suggest getting a decent amount of strength so you can loot the resources that you need. It's free to do, obviously, and it's not going to cast you a lot of cap cost you a lot of caps early in the game. Uh, caps are kind of hard to come by early in the game. You can take advantage of different features in the game to get more caps early. You can sell gear, you can sell equipment, you can sell armor, um, anything you can loot pretty much. Um, you can also focus settlements on producing large quantities of food and water. Um, water purifiers are a commonly used way to earn caps in the game, considering they sell for, I believe, around a maximum of 50 caps, depending on uh, what tier of your... Uh, charisma and there's also magazines in the game that it can increase it anyways I'm gonna go back to what this video is focused on is strength um, since every item you have uh, you can scavenge has a weight associated with it the stronger you are the more you can carry without becoming overburdened uh, which also encumbered um, which will not allow your character to run um, there's a perk later down in the tree that can make it where you can use action points to sprint, but um, your melee damage is inflicted by weapons. Obviously, you brandish with your hands or um, power armor can also increase your unarmed damage. So, strength is a pretty commonly used attribute in the game. Um, the first level, which you can only you can get this with just one point of strength, and it is called Iron Fist you get a bonus of 20% more damage with unarmed attacks which means you have no weapon equipped you're using fists and nothing but fists um, there's five ranks to the perk each one increasing it by 20% each time up to a maximum of 100% which is double what your base damage is with unarmed rank 2 um, gives you the ability to possibly disarm your opponent which is a pretty awesome feature um, again 
using unarmed is not very effective uh, to a certain extent. I mean, it's effective early in the game, but the higher level you are, you're going to have more of a requirement for damage being dealt to your enemies. And depending on what difficulty you're playing on, if you're playing on very easily, unarmed is definitely, you know, something you can do. Uh, playing on survival, I wouldn't suggest it. Um, personally, being able to attack my enemies from a range is just a preference. Um, you can do melee, you can do no unarmed. Um, but rank 3 of it, um, unarmed power attacks have a chance to cripple one of your opponent's limbs. So if you aim for a leg or something, you can cripple the leg. Aim for the arm, you can cripple the arm, etc. Um, rank 4 unarmed power attacks have an increased chance to cripple one of your opponent's limbs, so it uh, increases your chance to cripple them. And rank 5. Uh, makes it where criticals in your vats will paralyze your opponent. Um, obviously, you have to build up your critical meter to use a critical, so it's based on when you want to paralyze your opponent, which is an awesome feature. Now, also, I'm going to bring this up. In each rank of these perks, the first rank requires just one strength. It doesn't matter what level you are. Rank 2 requires a strength of 1, and you have to be level 9, character overall level 9. Uh, rank 3 is level 18, rank 4 is level 31, and rank 5 is level 46. So that's late game perk right there. But if you keep unarmed up until that point in the game, using these abilities would be a great thing. Going, Moving on to level 2 strength, which has two points in your strength tree, is the big leak perk. Uh, this makes it where you do an increase of 20% more damage with melee weapons each tier up to level 5 up to a maximum of double damage um, rank 2 requires level 7 two strength points uh, throughout the entire tree it requires two strength points uh, level 2 is level 7 requirement character uh, you gain a chance to disarm your opponent so going back to the unarmed perk does the same thing um, Except in this one, with rank 3, which requires level 15, you gain an increased chance to disarm your opponent instead of criticals, or uh, crippling your enemies. Rank 4 is a requirement of level, 40, or level 27, and you can hit all your targets in front of you uh, with an attack. It doesn't matter if it's a power or a basic attack, you, have a ch you can hit all of the enemies in front of you. Which is great if you're getting attacked by multiple ghouls or multiple opponents in general. Uh, rank 5 requires level 42, which you, at that point, you do double damage with all melee weapons. And you gain a chance to cripple your opponent or grand slam their head off, which is an instant, pretty much an instant kill. Um, you do not have to use a critical to gain that ability, so overall this does have a plus over the unarmed tree. Um, moving on to level 3 strength, which is armor. Uh, this has four tiers to it, rank 2 requiring thir level 13, rank 3 requiring 25, and rank 4 requiring level 39. Um, each tier increases the rank of armor mods that you can put onto your armor. So. If you're using power armor or combat armor, raider armor, any of that, uh, this is increases how much protection you can modify to it. So getting a max level of it is a great thing to have, especially with power armor. If you use power armor, if you plan to use power armor or not, um, any armor in general. Uh, moving on to blacksmith, there are three ranks of this one. Uh, rank 2 requiring level 16 and rank 3 requiring level 29. It increases your ability to modify melee weapons. Rank 1 is basic melee weapon mods, rank 2 is um, moderate weapon mods, and then rank 3 is the maximum. Um, these are more based on like rank 1 melee weapon mods or for are for like machetes like basic weapons, switchblades, machetes, um, I think, I believe the Chinese officer swords first upgrade is rank 1, 
And then when you get to rank two and three, that's more things for like super sledges, sledgehammers, and you know the higher tier, heavier weapons, the ones that are going to do more damage than a machete, uh, more blunt weapons, and so on. Uh, moving on to level five strength, heavy gunner. This perk has five ranks. Rank one just requiring five strength. Rank two is level eleven. Rank 3, level 21, rank 4, level 35, and rank 5, level 47. Each one of this increases your heavy weapon damage by 20%, um, up to a maximum of double damage. Same with unarmed and melee. Um, <clears throat> rank 2, you have an improved hip fire accuracy. Rank 3, your hip fire accuracy is increased even more. Rank 4, you have a chance to stagger your opponent and then rank 5 just increases your damage by double. Moving on to level 6 strength, which requires 6 strength points, um, is strong back. This is a perk that I definitely recommend if you plan on looting a lot of stuff, especially if you're focusing on settlements. This is a 4 tier perk, so it will take you a while to get to the last tier. Um, rank 2 requires level 10, 3, 20, and then rank 4, level 30. Um, the first tier increases your carrying weight by 25, and then rank 2 increases it by 50. Rank 3 makes it where when you're over, overburdened, you can use action points to run, which also takes out your VATS action points. It's all in the same pool. Uh, rank 4 uh, makes it so where when you're over encumbered, you can fast travel. Moving on to level 7 strength is Steady Aim. This is a two-tier perk. It makes it where hip fire accuracy is improved when firing any gun, so you can also add this onto your heavy weapon accuracy and make it where you'll get even better accuracy. Uh, rank 2 requires level 28. Hip fire accuracy is improved even more when firing any gun. So, theoretically, with heavy weapons, you could have pinpoint accuracy, which is a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. You know, if you're wanting a lot of spread on your weapon to hit multiple targets, then you're not going to want accuracy. If you're wanting to be precise with your heavy weapons, such as minigun, you're going to want accuracy. Uh, moving on to tier 8 of strength is Basher. This is a 4 rank perk, level 2 requiring level 5, rank 3 requiring level 14, and rank 4 requiring level 26. Rank 2, um, well the perk overall makes it where gun bashing does more damage. Uh, rank 1 increases it by 25%, rank 2 by 50, rank 3 by 75, and then to a maximum of double damage. Uh, rank 2 also makes it where you can possibly cripple your opponent, rank 3 makes it where you have an increased chance to cripple your opponent, and rank 4 makes it um, further increases your chance to cripple your opponent and it also may also inflict a critical hit. So instead of having to use your points or your uh, critical bank to use a critical hit, it makes it where there's a default chance that you will get a critical. Uh, moving on to level 9 strength, uh, Rooted, which is a 3 rank perk. Uh, rank 2 requiring level 22, rank 3 requiring level 43. Uh, this makes it where while you're standing still, you gain a 25%, well, like plus 25 damage resistance, and your melee and unarmed attacks deal 25% more damage. So this can be stacked on top of the uh, Iron Fist and um, Iron Fist and the Big League perk. So when you're standing still, you could get up to a maximum of 175% more damage. Um, rank 2 uh, increases it furthermore by 50 damage resistance. Your melee and unarmed attacks deal 50% more damage. And rank 3 makes it so that you may automatically disarm enemies that use melee weapons against you. So, it's it's really good perk for a melee-based character. Um, moving on to the final t 
tier of strength is Pain Train. This requires a max strength um, overall. You have to have 10 points in strength to get this. It is called Pain Train. This uh, rank 2 requires level 24 and rank 3 requires level 50. So that, that's about as high level as the perks go. Um, this makes it where while wearing power armor and sprinting into enemies will hurt them and stagger them. Uh, robots and oversized enemies are immune to the stagger um, for rank 1. Um, rank 2 makes it where power armor now causes severe damage and more powerful staggers. And it uh, still makes it where robots and oversized enemies are immune to the stagger. Rank 3 makes it where sprinting into enemies while wearing power armor now causes massive damage and knocks them down. Impact landing near enemies inflicts even more damage. So, which impact landing is when you jump off of a building or just fall from a great height and power armor. You do like a little ground pound kind of thing, which you can further increase that by modding your power armor, but I'll go into that in a different video. There. So that is all the perks. I'm going to just go ahead and say this. If you're wanting to build a melee-based character, you're going to want to have big leagues, um, get the blacksmith perk for melee weapon mods, and also get the rooted perk. If you're wanting to do an unarmed character, also get the rooted perk and iron fist perks. Now, perks in the strength tree that I would recommend getting early game, um, no matter what kind of character you have, I would suggest getting strong back because it lets you carry more objects and armor if you plan on using armor which I pretty much used armor throughout the entire playthrough um, if you don't plan on using armor then don't worry about that perk but definitely get strong back the rest of them are pretty much more for whatever kind of specific character you want to do so if you want to get on arm melee um, if you plan on using power armor you can make it where you know you get unarmed and use unarmed while wearing power armor and get pain trained so you can charge into an enemy and deal 175 percent more damage with your unarmed attacks which also when you're wearing power armor the power armor increases your melee attacks you can also mod your power armor to where your fists can do energy damage and more than like um, I believe it increases your unarmed attack damage which I would put energy damage on it because certain enemies have weaknesses to energy damage and if you're using unarmed you obviously can't really get energy damage any other way other than using certain kinds of uh, attacks. You can also get like boxing gloves and stuff which I believe count as unarmed weapons but uh, there's not too many of them. Uh, there's spiked fi uh, spiked knuckles, there's uh, brass knuckles and stuff like that as well. But I, as far as I'm aware, you cannot put energy damage on those. So power armor, unarmed, great combination. Anyways, um, that's it for this video. Um, I hope this will help you out in building your character. And I will see you guys in the next video on Perception. This is General Sticky Lox out. If you like this video, don't forget to check out more of our videos and subscribe to our channel. The rest of our links are in the description. Thanks for watching.